Okay, so I'm just going to start us off, everyone. Um, can you see my share screen? Can you see my share screen? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so um, welcome and welcome back. So welcome to those people who have just joined and welcome back to those people who have joined us also earlier at breakfast time in the UK and, and 4 a.m. in the US and just before lunch in, in Finland and Greece and mid-morning in Spain and Belgium and wherever. So anyway, anyway, welcome and welcome back. Um, it's good to have you here. And we are saying welcome, hopefully saying welcome to everybody and, and saying stay safe and well. Um, so it is hello from, particularly just now, hello from myself, um, from Dr. Danielle Farrell, and also from Debbie Forsyth, who are going to be the three people um, presenting in this webinar. And um, it's scheduled to go on until about 1.30. So we've got until 1.30 and we'll we'll see how it goes this is the second webinar of the day um feels it feels a little bit like i've been holed up in the attic all day all morning so far um uh and this webinar doesn't particularly focus on the current pandemic but it focuses on our experiences some reflections and thoughts on our experiences in scotland and just before i move on to explain a little bit about that um i'm just going to say why why daniel and debbie have joined on the webinar today. So we, Danielle and Debbie both have personal experience of, of directing their own support in Scotland and are involved in co-facilitating a, a new training and development program that we've been running called Working Together for Change, which unfortunately was cut short by the pandemic. So so we were we were we were <laughs> on our way um, but now we need to rethink what we do with that as well. Okay, so so this is what we're going to do. I'm doing my I'm doing a short introduction. Um, then Danielle and Debbie are going to share some thoughts from their personal experience, in particular about what self-direct support has meant has meant to them, what's been working well, what have been the challenges and obstacles, and then some ideas about things that we've learned, hopes for the future, and maybe maybe a wee bit of advice. And at the end of the end of all that. Um, and, and also as we go through, people can make comments or ask questions, uh, either using the chat function at the bottom um, or at the end of the presentations, just by um, putting your hand up virtually um, or, or actually. So you can put your hand up like this, or you can put your hand up using the buttons at the bottom. We've also got like um, some very short polls that we're gonna try and ask you at the end of, at the, end of the presentations as well. So. So I'm just going to say something um, about some about Scotland. Um, so we have both in Scotland we have but we we have quite a long history of self-directed support and both generally of self-directed support and and also of direct payments more more specifically as well. Um, and we have had both policy and legislation for a considerable number of years. So we have a national strategy for self-directed support, um, which started in 2010, and actually is, would be due to finish at the end of this year, although it's been extended through into next year, which is intended to give the idea of a, of a vision, um, rights and responsibilities equal citizenship um, for, the, for those 10 years. And we also have <laughs> legislation, it's called Social Care Brackets Self-Directed Support Brackets Scotland Act 2013. And that came into force more than six years ago now, in, on April the 1st, 2014. And that legislation um, should mean that anywhere in Scotland, um, people have the same rights and responsibilities and local authorities have the same duties to provide um, in relation to self-directed support. Um, included in that are some statutory principles. And that means they're the principles that are around in the law. They're the rules that everyone should expect. And they are legal rules. But they're not things that, that should be optional. They are things that everyone should expect. Anyone who 
require some additional support should be treated in line with these principles. And there are five statutory principles. They are about collaboration, working alongside and with. They are about being treated with dignity, having the opportunity to make informed choices, being involved and participating in the way that self-directed support works both generally and individually for you and or your family. You might hear during the, during the presentations that Debbie and Danielle are going to give about the different options of what are, what are called the four four not four options, but the four options of self-directed support in our legislation. So our, our legislation identifies four options. And these are, the first option would be that the person has the right to choose to take a direct payment, i.e. a cash payment, an amount of money that they would then direct and use themselves in order to get the life and support that works for them. So that would be called option one. The second option would be that the person still chooses and directs what happens, but the money is managed by a third party, a different organize, often a provider organization, but sometimes um, an organization that is providing information and advice in other ways. Um, so the person still has choice and control, but they're not taking the direct payment themselves. The money is being managed by another, by an organization. This is called option two in Scotland. It's also often called when it's when the money is managed by a provider organization, an individual service fund. The third option under our legislation would be that the person chooses for the local authority in their area, the local public body, to arrange the support for them. So they would say, we're quite happy for you to arrange what support I need from the available organizations and ways that support is organized in my area. And as long as the person is making an informed choice about that, that's an equally valid way to say I'm directing my own support because I'm choosing to do that at this particular time. An option four is where you're using any, a mix of any of the three previous options. So you may say I'm quite happy with you organizing some aspect of my support, but I'm choosing to take the remainder of what I'm eligible for as a direct payment. And often people use option four um, as a way of testing things out, and some people continue to use option four, but it does mean that you're mixing, you're mixing any of the three previous options together. Um, we also have, um, a currently we also have a national implementation plan for the, for the two years 2019 to 2021. Um, and what that does is identifies four key areas where during this current two years, two year implementation plan, we expect to see change. And the actions in the national implementation plan um, should all be aimed to deliver the change that is described here. So by the end of those two years, the actions should enable more people to have more choice and control over the support they get. It should enable workers um, to be able to feel more confident, skilled and empowered to support people making those choices, for example. And they're the, they're the four key areas that are in the current national implementation plan issued by our national government, by Scottish government. Um, and my very final one, just before I pass over to Debbie, is just one that just does a little reflection on how is it really going. And the key thing now, as it was five years ago, and probably also how it was 10 years ago as well, but certainly in the implementation of self-directed support, um, there is considerable variation in the experience of individuals and families in different areas of Scotland, but also actually even within the same area. So there's quite a variation on people's experience, even though we have a national strategy and a national, um, national legislation. Um, there are many challenges alongside examples of positive progress. And there's little evidence of the transformation that, that would be required to really unlock the potential of self-directed support um, for everyone, 
for everyone to be able to direct their own support in a way that made sense to them and to use all the resources that were available to them in a way that worked best for them. And that just fits into the third point really here that there are examples of people directing their own support and being supported in new and effective ways, but not everyone's getting that choice, control and flexibility that was envisaged both in the national strategy, in the aspirations of people working towards this and in the legislation. Um, um, yeah, okay. Um, I know that we've been joined by Donna in this, in this, um, in this uh, webinar as well, who works with Social Work Scotland. And maybe we'll ask Donna just to, to say a little bit later on about the work that they're currently doing in, in, to try and change some of those challenges. But I'm now actually going to pass over um, to Debbie, Debbie Forsyth, who's going to talk about um, self-directed support, what it's meant to her and her family, and some of her reflections about that. 